Hello again. In this short video, we're going to talk about Engine Orange, the main search box visible on the library's homepage. Engine Orange lets you search many, although not all, of the library's online systems at once to discover print books, ebooks, articles from journals, magazines, and newspapers, and many other kinds of documents, videos, and sources. We will look at two main ways that you can use Engine Orange to research a topic and to locate a specific source that you already have in mind. Let's look for specifics first. Sometimes you already know the title of a play, a book, or an article. Maybe your professor has assigned it for reading, or you found it cited somewhere else and you want to locate it. Engine Orange can be great for tracking down these known sources. Let's say we're looking for the Oscar Wilde play entitled The Importance of Being Earnest. We'll type that title into the search box, but before we click search, we'll mark the radio button indicating that we're searching for a title. Notice the other radio button that would indicate we could also search by a specific author's name. When we click search, Engine Orange will bring back information about whether our library has this play and how we can access it. And here we'll see the importance of being earnest a play by Oscar Wilde available as an ebook that we can access online. Now let's imagine that we didn't know a specific title, but we needed to find a variety of sources on a topic. Maybe we're writing a research paper about Athenian drama. I'm going to click on the new search button in the toolbar to clear our previous search and start over on the advanced search page. We'll type our topic into the search box, much like we did with the play title. Notice I've put quotation marks around my phrase. Anytime you're searching for more than one word together as a phrase, putting them in quotation marks will improve the relevance of your search results. You could also set other options for your search if you chose. For example, maybe you need sources published in the past 20 years or only peer-reviewed sources. The options you choose here will likely vary based on the instructions that your professor gives you in a certain class. Scrolling all the way down the page to the disciplines and choosing one or a few options is one good way to improve the relevance of your search results. In this case, I'm going to limit my disciplines to drama and theater arts, and I'm also going to limit my search to scholarly and peer-reviewed journals. Now we'll click search and we'll see what we get back. So you can see here the results that I've gotten. It tells me how many results I got, 40. And each result has an icon beside it telling me what kind of source it is. For example, an academic journal. These icons can help us to distinguish between source types like books, academic journal articles, and production reviews in magazines and newspapers. If I feel like I have too many results to go through, I can use the filters down the left hand side to narrow my results down by date, subject, language, or other characteristics. Now I can click on any title to read more details, and that will often provide me with what we call an abstract or a summary of the source's goals and findings. This page also provides tools down the right-hand side, starting with basics like save, email, and print, but also the permalink tool, which gives me a stable address here to get back to this source in the future. And we can also find the cite tool, which gives me a formatted citation in my preferred citation style, such as MLA, to copy and paste a citation into my paper. Now keep in mind that this citation is created by a computer, so it may have errors. You might use it as a starting point, but review it carefully before turning in graded assignments. If we want to actually read a specific source that we've found, we'll look for the link to the full text. PDF full text and HTML full text will be a single click to read the content. If you don't see any link with the words full text, that might mean that our university doesn't have access to this article. In that case, you might see a link instead that says request from interlibrary loan. 
This is a great way to expand your research with many more sources that our library normally has available. We'll find a book or an article at another library and we'll borrow it for you to use. However, this may take several days for articles or a week or two for books, so it is not a last minute solution for your class assignments. As you go through your search results, you'll want to keep in mind the differences between scholarly, popular, and trade sources, and you'll want to be sure that you are evaluating the quality of each source and the authority of its author. You can refer to the other handouts to accompany this video for more information on differentiating source types and evaluating sources. Engine Orange also provides a lot of additional tools. To create a per free personal login called My EBSCO, to bookmark and organize sources and folders, to save searches so that you can come back to reviewing the results, and more. The help files linked at the top right corner of Engine Orange can tell you more about these features and can also explain the use of more advanced searching techniques such as wildcards. You can explore as deep as you'd like, but I hope this video has at least given you a good introduction. Until next time, stay safe.